everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Conquer the Hog. Look at the sunrise coming up behind me. Isn't that gorgeous? It's going to be a great day. I am walking to work today. So there's the shop. There's where we're heading. So we're up here at Tommy's house. Uh, this is a sport court area that he's pouring. Um, he told me the measurements. I cannot remember what it was. Uh, 30, 30 by 60 it looks like. Give or take a little. So we're going to pour this and he's going to power trial this smooth. And then we're going to pour a pad right over there by his grill. Uh, wood plank stamp. So we'll show you that as well. So we'll get set up. Talk to you in a minute. last pin so these are set two inches up we came in about five feet pulling a string from the two by four to our center driving the pin down oh, below. Top right there nail. top and nail concrete height Okay, we'll get these up on chairs, ready to go. Okay, while we're getting set up, Steve's gonna dig this out right in this area and get ready for a pad uh, 20 by 25. He's just gonna pull all this loose debris down. It's not gonna take too long at all. So I'm gonna head up top. I see a uh, cement truck just pulled in. Let's go pour some concrete. Well, I would have really liked to use this. It started working good. It was quite cold out. I think I fouled the spark plug. No time to fix that right now. We'll just keep hand screening. It's 30 yards. We've done it before. We'll do it again. Let's keep pouring. Nothing stops the pour, right? What a gorgeous morning. So we're using our pins for grade height, helping the uh, rebar up on the chairs. The rebar, the fiberglass rebar sag real easy, so we just help them through the middle. As soon as we get the slump right, truck in position. It was quite wet over there. We got a lot of rain over the weekend. That looks pretty nice. Okay, let's get pouring. Number two trucks backing out. We'll take them over behind the shop and wash them up. Here comes number three. We threw down our wheeling or our uh, traction mats. Just a little bit muddy. Got them stuck pretty good over there. They just float right on top of those. We've never broken one with a mixer. Amazing the amount of weight that they can hold in their plastic. There's my camera and my coffee. Ugh. All right, we'll get them in place. Oh, there's still a little bit left. Good. Okay. Is, did he mix up already? Okay, let's go. I'll keep the camera going here just for a minute while I get my last sip of cold coffee. There it is, now you can see. 
Hey Yui, I still have my coffee cup. Not a scratch in it. yards 830 so about an hour 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 15 30 yards hand straight edged would have been nice to use that power screed but that's on me maintenance 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 uh, everybody asks how do we wash our tools right there as the drivers are cleaning up up top they have a hose at the bottom we take and hit our stuff real quick they get first priority that 30 yard pour the camera is about dead no problem i have it plugged into my rave power box it'll be charged in 15 minutes or less so i did a review on that a couple weeks ago so i like to talk about it and give updates i'm really happy with it in case you were wondering thanks dan he'll exit right through here a little bit of mess a lot of mess it's to be expected this time of year mud everywhere but, uh, okay we have I think Dan's gonna repeat I think we poured this patio for Tommy and Sarah and the boys let's include all of them this is gonna be an elevated bar section this is our newest wood plank stamp pattern it comes with uh, hand stamps that we can give end grain to a uh, step area look at that isn't that cool looking we can give texture on the face. It's like a barn wood type thing. Now it looks really rough, but it really isn't. We got some deeps in the crevices, nail holes. Really neat looking. And this is our Ashler slate. Majestic Ashler slate. We do this quite often. This is new to us the end of last year. You're gonna see a lot of this. This is gonna be a big pick this year. So we do our heavy stone border. We're going to continue that border around this perimeter and then we're going to pick up our wood plank one more time over here. And what this is, didn't really know what to do in this corner, didn't want a landscape tucked in there and have to mow and maintenance, uh, so why not put concrete here. Nice huge patio and you get some seating out here in the sun. I mean, I never want to sit in the sun. I'll take all the shade I can get, but some people seem to like that. So some seating out here, uh, as well as a conduit coming up. Maybe down the road, a hot tub goes right here. So that's the plan for this one. Uh, everybody's getting a drink, getting regrouped. We'll be edging and power troweling this shortly. Steve and I believe two guys are going to go pour a garage while we pour this, then off to my work. Yeah, I just yep, pull through. the trigger and let it go. Done. <laughs> How about that, huh? That is, that is amazing. <laughs> yep. So just do every intersection uh, throughout the whole pad. So it is set to grade height. So we want to be able to find this next year. So we know we're at. 23 and a half inches by it'll be 70 inches I'm hooked on so once we eliminate an inch and a half so 70 by 23 and a half Steve or Tommy can come back to this video and see exactly where that is Okay, they're about done pouring that. We wanted to get that new concrete tied into old concrete right away. So we poured that first. Now they're coming over here. Okay, so I just got down here. Steven dug this out for me. Looks pretty good. That corner's a little bit low. That's okay. Uh, the corners I want to pour thick. You know, we're going to be running over them with all this bigger machinery. Uh, not huge, just bigger. Um, so corners thicker, 
Um, I'll go ahead and get some lumber laid out here. Nice simple pad. We can get a mixer all the way around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. What lumber do I have here? I have a couple two by eights. Let's see these two by fours. I have a six. Oh yeah. And let's see a two by eight there. We'll be ready here in no time. I'm gonna come off of this backside, right there. And I might double these up. I'm gonna pour about five or six inches thick. Hey, remember the other day I was walking down here, picked up a screw, and that's why right there. Look at that tire. So that's 16, 20, <laughs> how about right about there? Nice big pad to work off of. It'll keep it cleaner for the sawmill. Um, we just called, concrete's here. Laser set up, pins are out and around the perimeter pretty much. Uh, let's join that together. I'll have this ready in about an hour. Let's go pour a stamp patio. People across the world say, why don't you power trial more? And I see videos, a lot of guys will power trial this and they don't touch up the edges. They look terrible around posts, around pipes, anything protruding up through the floor. So we hand trowel all that nice and clean. And now we're going to power trial it. So as we're doing it, we'll knock out our pins so we can get all the way to the edge. Jumping around everywhere today. All right, heading over all here. of our chairs on the big four, so we'll spread, pick the rods up, and get going. Now they poured the bottom half. It's still pretty wet, so we're going to take some two-foot rebar stick in there and do a tie in together that's for a basketball hoop so we want good tie in there three feet down okay we were to put one foot here one foot here you see we're just leaving a mark we're not sinking at all and on joke all the way off so no knob just a uh, quick lever tilt the blades up a little and the tighter the concrete gets the more pitch you put on them now we're not going to burn this uh, just smooth that's 36 inches so you do that, and you step it back half the width of the, the machine. Hit it one way, hit it the other, diagonal, and you wind up with a perfectly flat area. Notice how slow he's going at first. You don't want to get on that wet concrete and just whip it up. You're, what you're doing is just knocking down some of the highs from the straight edge. I know, I know. <laughs> and uh, just truing everything up, slow and flat, right? I say it in almost every video, same applies for that. As the concrete gets harder, up the throttle, higher pitch of the blades, and away you go. 
This is about 1,800 square feet. We can usually do about 3,000 square feet with one machine. Uh, we have three more down in the shop. We can run down and grab it if we need it in the sun or if this thing stalls out. We always uh, take two with us, if not more, just in case throttle breaks, and you, like you saw with my, uh, I already took it down in the shop. You know, that didn't work. Uh, so things happen. We always bring two of these. We always bring two or three power buggies. Always have that backup. You, ne you never know when things aren't going to work right. Just covering the hard areas. Uh, notice he's doing the end of the pour first because that was in the truck the longest. So it's a little bit tighter than when we started pouring. Concrete's in the truck longer, builds up heat, sets up quicker. This morning when it was cool, we got it out of the truck. Now it's just kind of laying up there and it's in the shade a little bit. Okay, basketball hoop jig is set. And we'll come back to this. This was a little bit wet. So we just got it in, rebar or connected and the under concrete was still pretty soft we got good tie in how are we looking over here matt okay okay we have about two percent calcium in this calcium chloride generates heat makes the concrete set up excuse me so we need the border edger out and ready to go we're constantly getting tools out and ready in position where we need them. Okay, so we're just going around the edges, troweling everything, smoothing. Now I got to re-roll it. We're cutting in our border. We do this in the same pour. That way it stays together real nice. In a year, if we pour this separate, it'll sink or it'll raise. Uh, so we're all tied together, rebar as well as concrete. So very little pressure down. Concrete's still really wet. That, you can just take it, scrape a little bit up, lay it right there. Boom. So I'll get this done. Always pushing forward. You want to stay ahead of the concrete. While this is wet, we can do it. You see, we didn't even get on here with a knee board yet. Concrete's way too wet. Just cleaning up the edge. And finally, with the edges all done, I just re-roll. Cleaning this debris up. Keeping the edge nice and clean. Nice rolled edge. Nice and tight, nice and full, nice and true. Almost ready to get on here. The guys are back. Steve stayed to finish. Uh, so we're going to get concrete coming for one more walk here and then on to my project. So we each come on. Oh, it's perfect. Nice flat trowel. Stone comes down two inches. Don't worry about that wall so much. This is almost ready to stamp. It is ready to stamp. Can you hear the panic in my voice? This is me panicking. Okay, so show me the underside of your pattern. Go ahead, you keep going, Matt. So that's what it looks like. Heavy stone turn it. It's in the shade. Turn it. There you go. So you can see the deep graining in it, and it'll match that right here. There's the deep. So Matt's doing the border. We do that first, and then we'll leave the patterns there as our wood plank runs over it so we don't mark the border with the wood plank. That's one more uh, tip. That way you can do a border while you're doing your stamp. 
All right. No, he needs one. Cord and a hammer drill. Okay, I'll get the camera set up. I'm going to start stamping right behind him. Starting at this edge, running to the house. If we wind up with a little sliver, no problem. Stone will cover it. And that's what we did here. So we want, not that they're touching at all, but we want these to be sort of the same setback as here. If you're standing over here looking at it, it'll look nice if these joints line up with those joints. I'll show you that when we're done. I might have, I'm going to pull a string down here and make sure. This row nice and straight with our border. We didn't want to leave a two inch piece of wood here, so we just floppied underneath it on top of our heavy stone floppy. So that's all done. We're not tamping yet, we're just towing in. And you can peel it back and take a look. Always get those corners in and edges. Just not quite ready to tamp yet. Matt's getting them in place. What I wanted to show you before it dries too much, you can see right down our joints here, lines up with our outer. It's those little things that matter. Gorgeous stamp. Not that we got, it got away from us, it was just kind of tight getting these patterns in. So, I really like it. You can see the sawmill marks in the grain. Really cool stamp. Okay, now for our last pour up here at Tom's house, grab a drink of water, mixer's ready to go, nice easy sidewalk, <laughs> sort of, this is what we wanted to match, we did this last year, if you haven't seen it, it's worth scrolling back, um, the project at Tommy's house, something, that's all concrete, so we got the same mix in the truck as we did here, and we carve all that by hand. Now we'll come back and acid stain that in a couple of months once this catches up. Probably July we'll be acid staining all this together. Okay, let's get pouring. I gotta grab a drink of water first. Jenny, thanks for your help. Going to eat lunch? Okay. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. We'll be back to this. Tom said one more pour around front. I don't know where he gets that from. Okay, Tom's putting the finish on here. Looks like maybe one more time and that is done. That's pretty smooth. Okay, let's go see what we're getting into out front. Okay, one quick chalk line and we are ready to pour. This concrete's very tight. So, Tommy wanted something for his stone to come down and set on. This is gravel, limestone, all the way down to the footer. And it's been here for, well, almost a year. So now, whenever he's mowing, he, the mower can come right up on that. He doesn't want to do any weed whacking. So this is one way to do it, I guess. But I, th I think it'll, I like the idea, stone coming down and sitting on top of this. So we're gonna pour the bottom. We might give out a little taste of water and we'll top it. Okay, so we poured the bottom real tight. Added a, just a couple gallons to it. Now it's workable. And push this back against there now right underneath the plug 
good. Yeah, keep them going that way. Just about all filled in. It's still really tight. We want this sloping away from the house ever so slightly. This is a nine bag mix. Nine sacks of cement per yard. Our standard mix is six. No aggregate, just sand and cement. Yeah. Okay, we are underway down here. Basically 21 feet by 30 feet. Then I can position that sawmill however I want to do it. With maybe even a place where I can pile uh, my new pile, my new cut lumber on the concrete. I'd really like the lumber under our, our cover. Uh, so I'll put you on time lapse. We'll set this for height. We have three inches of fall, one inch and 10 feet coming this way. So relatively flat. We're going to be level across with this on top. And look right here. Easy. Oop. Right there. There we are. Perfect. So level across, a little bit of fall. Mike said he wants that saw, sawmill setting close to level as we can. We want a little bit of pitch. I don't want water laying underneath it. So uh, we're going to go with that. Let's get some concrete coming. I'll get some stone in here. I have a pile right here. Okay. Made my way back up here. Super smooth. You can see a nice shine to it. That way they can hockey pucks will slide right across there. I think they're carving this. I got to talk fast. My truck's coming for down below. You guys need anything? Yeah, no, I think that's a good relief. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. As long as you can run it. Yeah, uh, why don't you make one match? Yeah, right there, come up. What do you think? Are these kind of big? Do you want to do something? Yeah, this is seven foot. Yeah, I'm just trying not to make them too small. No. Too like busy. Pattern. I got like what do we got this here? Do we do the same? Thing? I like that. I mean, it, it looks good. So these are our relief cuts. They just take the floats up on edge, gouge it out. Still connected here, one screw. So that's what we want it to look like when we're done. And again, this will get acid stained. I got 14 yards coming for down there. Well, I'm just thinking, could it crack and then, but it, it's intersecting and coming off. This is coming together. Uh, I could go either way. I think it looks nice. Or do you want to chop it up and come through there? Go with your gut. Yeah. Well, we're in good shape down below. <clears throat> and then they'll pull this, chamfer that edge. Okay, I can't get too much footage of this. Again, scroll back if you want to see how we did it. It was a two fun days on that. Okay, we're going to add one right off of that post. You can see forms are off, concrete's fairly tight. That's about an inch deep into the concrete. Just a nice subtle curve with a hook. That's down here on this face. Roughing it up. Roughing it up. Okay, I gotta get down there. Here, here comes one, and there's another one right behind it. 
the mixer and go for a ride. Hitchhiker! Let's do it. Do it? Do it, it's okay. Did you tell him behind the shop? He's been there. Ooh, kind of bouncy. So this is the view from a mixer driver. Okay, last pour of the day. 14 yards. Let's go. What time is it? I think it's one o'clock. We did pretty good today. We got a lot poured. Yeah. A lot of difficult stuff too. All right, I'll go to time lapse. Just a standard pour. We have our two grade pins in. Let's get this done. As soon as I see concrete on the ground. Oh, it's nice. There it is, 14 yards, bored and finished. Uh, you couldn't hear them. A couple of guys right there. We're in a panic. We're not gonna have enough concrete. Dad, you didn't order enough concrete wheelbarrow and a half left I said Steve don't worry I got it a little bit of cleanup a little bit of finishing and we'll wrap this day up to catch any of this footage uh, they put a heavy stone stamp on this so that this will match the border when he's all done he'll he'll stain this black he ran that for his low voltage wire it can go underground and come right up the stone right into his outlet a transformer low voltage all right let's get these pins off and get cleaned up looks nice tom okay and here's the shape and design they went with all cleaned up i like it we should do that on one of those entrance ways to the five million dollar shacks we work on you know it's just something you don't see pretty sharp looking all right next time you see this we'll be acid staining Down. all right there's our big blue kind of rusty big blue Taking out our bull float lines. Now that is ready to broom. A little bit of cleanup right here. Get a close up of that. I'm gonna hit it the other way too. Looks nice, yeah. Okay, good. All right, uh, keep getting cleaned up, but we're in good shape. Room. Emily, you can put music over my grunting and groaning. <laughs> Again, some good texture. Like I said, I didn't want a real deep broom, but I do want broom marks all the way up to the edge. Now this stuff usually flakes right off, but I did broom over it. If I don't get it now, it'll be real hard to get off. This stuff will come right off tomorrow. Just working that in. See, that'll all come right off. Okay, I'll get this all done and I'll let you take a look at it. See, I'm just a light broom. That's right where the sawmill's going. Okay, so I just want to run the perimeter with the broom, cleaned up the edge. 
see a little broom chatter right here and that's a right about where we switch loads not a little bit but not too bad here i like the texture just showing you the broom mark the whole way around and i cleaned up this edge Whew. i should have done this 15 or 20 minutes ago so a little bit of crumbs out there they'll sweep off one two three saw cuts and probably just one down the middle and i will make it line right up well i'll do two because i'll make it line up with these we'll do that tomorrow mike morgan ready for the sawmill bring on the wood miser okay before i sign off in this video i'm going to get a lot of comments tom you should wet that broom and it'll broom much nicer now that's true but when you wet the broom now you're adding water to that surface and you're diluting the water cement ratio uh, to the surface that making it a little bit weaker a little bit weaker i want this as strong as it can possibly be just like all of our work i'll be back here in about five days and i'll show you this surface and i can i can assure everybody it's going to look nice those little blotches are going to go away and are going to fade and we're going to have good traction and a nice looking job as well as nice and strong and mainly that's what i'm looking for just wanted to touch on that real quick as always thanks for tuning in to conquer with the hosses what a crazy monday what should i even call this video because we covered so much area we'll come up with a good one emily that's your challenge she's usually in charge of naming these videos so we'll see what she comes up with see you tomorrow everybody don't be late